Pediatricians diagnose, treat, and help prevent diseases and injuries in children. In this video, we're going to help you answer the question, should you become a pediatrician in 2020? We're going to go over salaries, the job market, and the latest trends. Coming up. Hey everyone, Stephen Hack here with Career Watch, where we help you with your career search. If you end up enjoying the video, hit that thumbs up to support the channel. All the charts and graphs in this video are available at my blog. Click the link in the description to go and view them. Pediatricians have a number of roles and responsibilities. These include prescribing and administering treatment, therapy, medication, vaccines, and other medical care to children. Pediatricians examine children to assess their growth and development, and they treat them if they have any growth or development concerns. They also perform and interpret various diagnostic tests. Pediatricians also advise children as well as their parents on diet, activity, hygiene, and disease prevention. So what is the average salary of a pediatrician? This data is from the United States Bureau of Labor Statistics. It doesn't include overtime benefits, signing bonuses, tips, or commissions. It is just base salaries. And the cool part about this data is we can take it two decades into the past and we can view trends. In 1909, the average base salary for a pediatrician was $112,700. By 2019, this average base pay rose to $184,000. $410. Pediatrician base wages increased $71,650 from 1999 to 2019, and this comes out to about $3,500 per year on average. So quite a bit of money. So next, we're actually going to compare pediatrician wages with other physicians. And to do this, we're actually going to use a different data set. We're going to use Medscape's Physician Compensation Report in 2020. So Medscape's 2020 Physician Compensation Report actually does look at total compensation, not just base salaries. They found that both pediatricians and public health and preventative medicine physicians earn on average around $232,000 for total compensation. So it includes salaries, bonuses, and other forms of compensation. This sounds pretty good until you realize $232,000 is at the bottom of this list. Pretty much all other physicians make more than this. According to Medscape's 2020 Physician Compensation Report, orthopedic surgeons and plastic surgeons make the most amount of money. Orthopedic physicians on average make around $511,000 for total compensation and plastic surgeons $479,000 for total compensation. So those two occupations earn double what pediatricians tend to make. But there is some good news for pediatricians. We can actually look at the wage growth between 2019 and 2020, and pediatricians did pretty well. They saw a $7,000 increase using Medscape's Physician Compensation Report, the 2019 version and the 2020 version. When we compared it, we found a $7,000 gain in wages for pediatricians. So pediatricians did see a $7,000 increase according to Medscape, but again, orthopedic surgeons kind of took the cake for the greatest amount of wage growth. They saw a $29,000 increase in, in total compensation from 2019 to 2020. So that covers compensation. What is the job market like for pediatricians? Is this a growing field or is this a shrinking field? Again, we can look at the Bureau of Labor Statistics and they have two decades worth of jobs data that we can look at. In 1999, the Bureau of Labor Statistics recorded 18,940 employed pediatricians. By 2019, this rose to 29,740 employed pediatricians. So from 1999 to 2019, there was a growth of about 11,000 jobs for pediatricians. But the government forecast is pretty interesting here. They're actually anticipating a 2% decline in the number of employed pediatricians from 1999 to 2019. They don't actually list a reason why they have this forecast. My theory is this, the reason they are anticipating a 2% decline in the number of jobs for pediatricians is because of the United States birth rate. To put this into perspective, in 1957, there were 4.3 million births in the United States. This is kind of what created the baby boom. 61 years later, even with a lot of population growth for the United States, they recorded 3.7 million births, around 600,000 fewer births 61 years later. So this falling birth rate could be one of the reasons why pediatricians are expected to not have as much 
job growth as some other occupations. One other thing we like to look at is, is there a job shortage? Is there enough pediatricians in the job market right now? And we use indeed.com to help determine this. So on indeed.com, we search for the number of job postings for pediatricians using the keyword pediatrician. We found that there was an 824 job openings versus about 30,000 employed pediatricians. This means that there's about one job opening for every 37 employed pediatricians. So based on this, there isn't quite the shortage of pediatricians that there are for say oral surgeons. And I did do a video on oral surgeons. There's a crazy shortage of oral surgeons right now. There is one job opening for every five employed oral surgeons. So pediatricians are not seeing the same kind of crazy um, shortages that other doctors are seeing. So there isn't a job shortage for pediatricians the way there is for a lot of other surgeons and physicians. So is it hard to become a pediatrician? Well, I found a really good Reddit post uh, from a board certified pediatrician. I am a pediatrician and I work at a pediatric urgent care. The pay is way less than most other specialties, but still way more than most people make. I choose to work part time, which is about two 12 hour shifts per week. I'm very happy with my work life balance, compensation and type of work. School is always pretty easy for me, but you have to take the hardest classes and excel in them. You can't party as much as your friends in college. Med school is super intense, as is residency, and you sacrifice every part of your life for it. You hardly ever get to see your family. Friends stop trying to do anything with you because you can never go. Physical and mental health suffer, relationships suffer. I had to wait to start my family and lost a lot of years of good quality of life in my 20s. It was pretty horrible, and if I had to do it again, I don't know if I would. That's all medicine though. I lose sleep at times when I realize after the fact that I missed something or didn't think of something or wished I'd done something differently. So one great way to determine if this occupation is for you is to take a Ryasek test or to figure out what your Holland codes are. That's basically the same thing. Once you figure out your Holland codes, you can compare the scores that you got with the interests of people in different occupations. So for pediatricians, they score really high in the investigative and the social themes. People that score high in the investigative theme tend to describe themselves as thoughtful, analytical, intellectual, complex, independent, and curious. They are typically motivated by analyzing, inquiring, and researching. People that score high in the social theme tend to describe themselves as helpful, cooperative, kind, cheerful, and patient. They are motivated by helping, empowering, and instructing others. So as you can see, there are pros and cons to becoming a pediatrician in 2020. This is one of the lower paying physician fields. The total compensation according to Medscape in 2020 was around 232,000 per year, which is on the lower end when compared to other physicians. There has been job growth over the past two decades, but the government is actually forecasting a 2% decline in the number of jobs over the next 10 years. This could be due to the declining birth rate that has been going on in our country for over 60 years, ever since the baby boom. And this could influence the future job prospects of future pediatricians. Many different people enjoy this field. Are you a pediatrician? What do you enjoy about this occupation? And what do you dislike about this occupation? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.